Hi guys, welcome back to Introduction to Rails. My name is Tensor. Today we're going to be implementing our command and render libraries. Basically what we want to do is we want to walk through our layout tree and then build what's called a display list. This is a list of graphic operations that allow us to draw things. For instance, one could be like render some text and the other one could be like draw a rectangle. We put these commands into our display list and then we can use that list to search out items that might be completely covered up by later operations and remove them them to eliminate wasteful rendering. You can also modify and reuse your display list in cases where you know only certain items have been changed. Libraries like React that use DOM diffing and take advantage of this type of behavior. The first half of our display list is going to be in our command module. As such, we want to create a file called command.rs and we want to go into our lib.rs file and put it in as a submodule. Inside of our commands.rs, we want to make an import for our CSS color and our CSS value, our layout, layout box, and our layout rectangle, and then of course standard FMT so that we can implement debugging. Our display list type will be a vector of display commands. Our display command is going to be an enum and it will have one specific type in it called solid rectangle. This will have a color and then the actual area of the rectangle. We could add more like content box and put a string in that, but our current CSS parser and our current HTML parser only parses specific elements. So now we want to build a function called display command. This will take in the root layout box and then output our display list. The idea behind this function is to traverse our entire layout tree and create our display list. This function will then create a mutable vector that's empty called commands, and then we'll call render layout box with our mutable vector of commands and with the root inside of it, and then we'll return commands when we're finished. Then our render layout box function will take in our mutable display list that we passed in here, and then a reference to our layout box. We want to call these two functions first, render background, then render borders, and these will both take in our commands and layout box. And then we want to iterate through our layout box children and call this function recursively on it so that we will then render the background and borders for each of the child nodes in our layout tree. Our render background function is fairly simplistic. This takes in commands, which is a mutable display list, and then our layout box, which is a reference to our layout box and then we call a get color function inside of it we put our layout box then we put in the background color selector and then we want to map a closure to our layout box our closure will take the color and it will push into our commands our display command solid rectangle with color and layout box dimension border box and you have to remember that our commands here is our vector of display commands get color takes in the layout box and then a name which is a slice of string and it will output an option color we match on layout box dot styled node dot value so we want to get the value from the selector from the styled node and if we get back sum with something in it then we want to deref the v which is the value and if if that value is type color, then we want to get the actual color out and we want to put it inside of an option and clone it. Otherwise, we want to return none. And if we get back none from the original match, we want to return none as well. So this function assures that we get a color value for our selector and it also assures that we get a valid color value for our selector. So now we want to make our render borders function. This will take in our commands, which is our mutable display list, and our layout box, which is our reference to layout box. First, we create our color, which we we match with get color. We pass in our layout box and border color. Then if we get back some color, then we want to get that color and then bind it to color. If we get back nothing, then we just return nothing and bind it to color. So this is for drawing the border color of our box. Then we get the layout box dimensions and we bind this to D. And then we want to get the border box, which is the parent box of this particular element. And we use this method border box that we created last time. Then we want to push into our vector of display commands various different commands. So first let's push in a display command solid rectangle with our color cloned. Then we want to instantiate a rectangle with border box X and Y and then D border dot left for width and then border box dot height for height. Then we want to push another one into our vector with our color cloned and then an instantiated rectangle with border box X plus border box dot width minus D dot border right. And then for X, we're just pushing in border box dot X. Then for width, we're pushing in D dot border dot right. And then for height, we're pushing in border box dot height. So remember D is our layout box, so the actual element that we're looking at, whereas border box is the box that's on the outside of this element. 
Then our next one gets border box X, border box Y for X and Y, and then width, which is our border box width, and then our div.border top for our height. And then finally, we get our border box X, and then our border box Y plus border box height, and then subtract our d.border.bottom. And then for the height, we put in d.border.bottom. And for the width, we put in borderbox.width. This top command is for painting our left border. This second command is for painting our right border. This third command is for painting our top border. And this final command is for painting our bottom border. Finally, we want to implement FMT for our display command. This is fairly simple. We just match on self. And then for display command solid rectangle, we get C and R out, and then we just write them to the screen. Okay, guys, now we're done with our command module. Let's build our lib module. First, we want to bring in our dependencies. We're bringing in GFX, GFX text, GFX window gluten, and gluten. GFX is an API that gives us access to OpenGL, and gluten is a lower level library that makes it easier for us to create windows and stuff. We want to bring in all of our imports inside of lib.rs, and for GFX, we also want to annotate it with macro use so that we can use the macros from inside of the library. We also want to add our renderer to our lib.rs so it will be a sub module. Inside of renderer, we're going to import gfx, gfx text, gfx window gluten, gluten, gfx factory, gfx traits factory extension, gfx device, layout, and our command display command. So gfx factory helps us build our vertice factory. The factory extension gives us a few helper functions and the device allows us to gain access to the window and stuff. I've created some OpenGL shaders and I'm just going to gloss over what's going on here because this is not an OpenGL tutorial, this is a Rust tutorial. So this file, solid.glslf, has one vector of dimension four inside of it called vcolor and this is just our color, so it has RGBA. Then inside of solid GLSLV, we've got an attribute, which is a vector two called a position, an attribute, which is a vector three called a color, and then another vector four called V color. We're setting V color equal to vector four with a color inside of it, and then 1.0 inside of it. Basically all this is going to mean for us is that the alpha inside of all the colors that we render into our window will be always 1.0. And the reason why we're doing this is simply because it's easier this way. Our GL position, we're putting in a position inside of a vector four, and this is just basically telling the shaders where all of our elements will be. All right, so jumping back into our render.rs, we want to make some types. One's called depth format, which binds to our GFX format depth stencil. And then we have our color format, which is GFX format RGBA 8. Then our screen width will be a U size and it will be 1024 and our screen height will be 768. So our window will just be 1024 by 768. You could make this dynamic if you'd like, or you could make it larger or smaller. We're just going to keep it relatively small. Then we have this clear color constant. This is just white. So 1.0 for all of the variables here. And it's just an array of four size with F32s inside of it. And we're going to use the clear color to make sure that any of the elements that do not appear will end up as white and any of the backgrounds that we're not rendering will be white. And if we want to re-render our picture, it will show white. Now we're going to use this macro called GFX defines. This allows us to create two objects. One of them is called vertex, which will have a position field and a color field. If you remember, we have this a pause and a color, and we bind these two attributes to the fields of this object that we're creating here. It's bound to a color and a position. Then our pipeline is type pipe. It's got its video buffer in it which points to vertex buffer with vertex inside of it. And that's, this is vertex. And then the out, which is the output, points to render target color format target zero. We want to create a struct called render text. This will have a field called text, which, which is a slice of string. It will have a position, which will be an array of two size, and then a color, which will be an array of four size. Then for rendering our text, we're just going to input our command list, and then we're going to output a vector of rendered text. And we're just going to output a vector new because we're not actually rendering text with our HTML document. So we don't have this functionality in there, and that's why we're just kind of making a placeholder function. Then we want to make a a render commands function. This takes in our command list. That puts a tuple of vector vertex and vector u16. We create our mutable vertices and we just instantiate a new vector. And then our index data is also a new vector. Then we create a rect num, which is a u16, which equals zero. Then we want to iterate through our command list, pull out the commands, and then we match on the dereft command. For display command, solid rectangle, we pull out color and rect. And then we create a variable called c, 
which takes in color R, color G, and color B. Then we call this render rectangle function, which we'll create in a moment. This takes in our color and our rectangle, and then we want to append what the output is, which is V, into our vertices vector. Then this part of the function is going to seem a little strange, and I'm not really going to explain it all that much. Our index base is rect num times four, in this case zero times four, so zero. And then our index data, we're going to append zero, one, two, two, three, and then zero again. And then we're going to increment rect num every single time we go through this loop. And finally, we'll return our vertices and our index data as a tuple. For our render rectangle function, we take in our color, which is a reference to our array of three size with F32s in it. Then we take in our rectangle, and we're going to output a vector vertex. We call a function called transform rectangle that we'll make in a moment. This function will allow us to transform our HTML coordinates to OpenGL coordinates, and I'll explain what the difference is in a moment. Then we'll get our X and Y and height and width from it. And then we'll use those numbers to create our vertices. And this is a vector of our vertices. This vertex here is our bottom right corner. This vertex here is our bottom left corner. This vertex is our top left corner. And this vertex is our top right corner. And then we just pass back our vertices. Here's our transform rectangle function. It just takes in our layout rectangle and it outputs four F32s inside of a tuple. We take width and divide it by the screen width as an F32 and multiply it by 2.0. Then we take height divided by our screen height as an F32 and multiply by 2.0. For X, we divide it by screen width, then we multiply by 2.0 and then subtract 1.0. And then for our Y, we make this negative. We divide it by screen height as F32, multiply it by 2.0, then subtract 1.0 plus height. The box on the left is our layout box coordinate system. So this is the basic coordinate system that a piece of HTML would use inside of our layout tree. So our X and Y coordinate is the top left corner. Then X plus width gives us our top right corner. Y plus height gives us our bottom left coordinate. This is what OpenGL looks like. So X and Y gives us our bottom left coordinate. So we're moving this to here. Then we're moving this to here and then we're swapping these two as well. And that's what those calculations do for us. Okay, so now the final thing that we want to do is create our render loop. This is a function that gets called many times a second to render our screen properly. We create what's called a window builder by calling gluten window builder new with title and we make our title browser and then we give it the dimensions with our screen width and screen height. And then we want it to have vsync, so we add that as well. Then we initialize our window by passing the builder inside of this function here. And this gives us window, which is a gluten window. It gives us device, which is a GFX device GL device. It gives us the factory, which is our factory factory. It gives us the main color and it gives us our main depth. From factory, we want to create an encoder. So we create a buffer and then we use this into method to create a GFX encoder. And then we also want to pipe in our two shader files and we create this PSO, which is our pipeline stage. Then we want to render our commands. This is our function that we made earlier. This gives us our vertices and our index data. Then we want to render our texts, which gives us our texts. And then we call factory create buffer with slice. This creates a video buffer for us. And we pass in our vertices and our index data as a slice. And this will give us vertex buffer, which is our buffer and our slice, which is our slice. Then we want to create a pipe data, which we put in our vertex buffer. And then for our output, we put in our main color. Then for our test renderer, we want to create a GFX text renderer. This is just GFX text new with the factory in it build. And then we unwrap it and we put it in here. And then we have an event loop. So we create a loop here and we annotate it with the name main. And then we say for event in window pull events. And then we want to match on that event. And if we get a keyboard input with some virtual key escape, or we get a glue event closed, then we break out of this loop. So in other words, if a user hits the escape key or if they close the window, then the actual program will exit. Then we render our text by iterating through our text and then adding them. Now granted, we have no texts to add aside from the title. Then we want to take our GFX encoder and clear it out and we pass in our white color and our data dot out. And we just do this just in case we already have data on the window. Then we want to draw our data. So we pass in our PSO our data and our slice. And then if we had text, we would use our test renderer to draw that text. And then we flush our device, we swap the buffers, and then we clean it up. All right, so that's it for our render.rs. So tomorrow we'll actually make our main function, which will allow us to input HTML and CSS and then output a web page. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to subscribe and like. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment box below. And if you disliked it, then downvote it as much as you like. Have a good night.